now because we have a conference there on October 4th. <laughs> okay, and uh, I, I'm uh, also a visiting professor here at the Faculty of Education, Department of Educational Research and Psychology, and uh, Dr. Chanisa is also a uh, co-researcher for this project on creative teaching, and she will also be presenting uh, in this workshop uh, some of our findings of the research that we've been doing. Uh, it's an international study on creative teaching between uh, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, uh, UK, and US. So we are going to present some of the findings as well. Right? And uh, this workshop we have had many times, uh, once during the conference as well, uh, last year on October 27th. And uh, we are actually, in fact, uh, this was, there was only like one hour. So we are going to expand it to for uh, one day workshop just to give benefit to our staffs and students. I don't know whether there are students here yet, maybe they are the way. Yeah. On some of our findings, uh, especially uh, for teachers who are uh, interested to become more creative in their teaching. Right? And uh, uh, this is a project I think most countries have already started uh, on how to uh, teach more creatively to make sure the students are also more creative, that our graduates are more creative in terms of being more independent thinkers yeah, and uh, being employable. Nowadays we have a lot of un uh, graduate unemployment, so that's the reason why we embarked on this research. Okay, and uh, for today, what we are going to do is we have a, a very uh, summary of what we have found in the research. At the same time, we want to help uh, our staff to and students to understand what we actually mean by creative teaching uh, based on research and based on our findings, right? Okay, so uh, outline, okay, what are we going to do today, right? Uh, we'll just start off with, when you talk about creative teaching, you cannot run away from creativity, right? You have to find, uh, when you ask a few people, what do you mean by creativity, then most of the time they'll say, oh, it's being original, that's all. But there's more to it than just being original. Okay? So, uh, let's look at what is creativity. Yeah? Uh, and before we start with what is creative teaching. Right? And uh, we are also going to look at uh, how you can enhance your students' creativity by looking at some of the creativity enhancing techniques. Uh, okay? So, uh, what we're going to do is uh, give you some ideas on some things that you can apply in your teaching even though you are teaching content but just a little bit of tweaking you can actually make them become more creative you don't have to really learn uh, how to be creative uh, how to design creative activities just by oh okay oh I can't hear oh no Ah, Hello, can you unmute me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Look, at, there's a song. Man. Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, creatively enhancing techniques, right? Uh, we are, so this is some of the things that I think uh, is very useful. Yeah. So if your friends are not able to come for this workshop, probably you can also share some of these uh, slides with them and explain to them. And then only we move on to what you mean by creative teaching, right? Okay, so we're going to uh, actually, maybe after this one day workshop, you become a more creative teacher. Ah, maybe your students may not even recognize you anymore. <laughs> because you're more creative now. <coughs> okay, so what we exactly mean by creative teaching? Huh? Teaching creatively, and what do you mean by, what's the difference between teaching creatively and teaching creativity? Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, you have to think about it as well. What do you mean? What's the difference between teaching creatively and teaching creativity? Okay, so maybe you can share some of your ideas. If you can spot the difference. Ah, spot the difference. And also, uh, to make it easier for teachers uh, to think whether they are actually uh, enhancing or teaching creatively and teaching creativity, we came up with this model here. Creative teaching model. Just to uh, uh, make people, make the uh, teachers to understand what areas they have to improve on, what are they focusing on, what are they focusing less on, right? So we came up with this creative teaching model, 
to assess your own your teachers' eh? the ability to teach effectively. And with the help of Chanisa's uh, uh, findings in Thailand, yeah, we are going to give you some real life examples of how uh, creative teachers at Tula actually taught, despite, of course, the many uh, problems like too many students, small classrooms, uh, too many hours of teaching, uh, other administrative jobs as everybody has at the university. <laughs> You know, you're all busy running around with research, writing, publication, teaching, and stuff like that. How can some of the lecturers can actually teach very creatively? Mm, that's very interesting. That we found from our research in Thailand as well as in Malaysia, US, and UK. And how can you also incorporate ICT and become more intelligent teacher and make your students more intelligent? <laughs> Yesterday I had a class with Dr. Charita. So you're using the handphone to become more intelligent. <laughs> okay, so there are many examples. And so on. And of course, at the end of uh, the afternoon, we will have more hands-on activities, especially from Dr. Chanisa. And also, we are going to uh, exercise, you're going to exercise your own creativity in designing a lesson for your own class. So that in next class when you go, you can use it. Okay, so this is more hands-on. That's why it's called workshop, right? <laughs> more hands-on. Okay, that's about all for today. One day, actually, it's supposed to be a two day workshop, so we compress it to one day, right? Anyway, uh, before we start, I would like you all to do one small activity. Uh -huh. Do you have the parallel lines activity on your table? Parallel lines, like this. Uh, ah, this one. Do you have this one on your table? If you do not, you can always get one from there. Okay. Okay. Now, you do, uh, early morning, your mind must be very fresh, right? So you become more creative, especially in the morning. Did you realize that you're more creative in the morning? Yes. I am very creative in the morning. So uh, if I go back to bed uh, the day before with a problem, next day, morning, I get the answer. <laughs> I don't know whether you have that experience. Yes, because you are struggling to find the answer, right, the day before. And then the next morning, you're not actually thinking about it. Ah, aha, you get the answer. Sometimes you're driving. Then you're driving, you're driving. You know, it's, it's very common. And that's how people became, uh, came up with the theory that if you want to become creative, you must really uh, strive to find the answer. So they call it the 99% perspiration, you know. Perspiration is what we can get to get just that 1% inspiration. <laughs> so then work hard and then forget about it. The next day, boom, you get the answer. But you must work hard first. <laughs> that's why I said 99% perspiration. You know, perspiration is working, right? Just to get one, one percent inspiration. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. But if you don't go spider, and other don't work hard, you will never get the one percent. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's try this one. Maybe here so you can do ninety-nine percent perspiration. <laughs> anyway, uh, this activity we did this in our class uh, workshop the other day. Okay, given those parallel lines, okay, you must make use of that parallel lines. See how many of them there? I think you have about 16 sets of parallel lines, right? Okay, you are supposed to make use of the parallel lines and draw a picture which uh, nobody else will think of. Ah, the trick of the game is you cannot, you should try to think of something uh, which you think nobody else will think of. And then, then draw the picture, but that picture must make use of the parallel lines. So parallel lines must be part of the picture. Okay, and draw as many as you can within uh, three minutes. Okay, only three minutes, huh? Okay, so just start now. And then write the name of the picture. Can you see the space at the bottom there? Ah, uh, there's a dash line there. Uh, just write down the name of the picture. That you have drawn. Uh, you will only get marks when you write the name for it, when you name the picture or your drawing. Okay?
try as many as possible. You must give a name for each direct or each complete picture. Now, just to give you an idea, because the, the aim of the workshop is to give you an idea of what you mean by uh, creativity, yeah, and uh, so that you can uh, uh, use it in, uh, in your creative teaching. Okay, uh, this is one activity to explain what you mean by creativity. Okay, now uh, early definitions of creativity, yeah, not only uh, follow what you all think about creativity. You all think about creativity as being original, right? Being original, right? Novel ideas, right? But it's more than that. One more, uh, three more the main ideas about creativity is fluency, uh, being fluent, okay? And the next one is being flexible. Uh, your, your thinking is very flexible. And another component of creativity is, according to research, is being elaborate. Ah, so, you all think about creativity as being original only, but there are three other things. But actually, there are more than that, in fact. So, for today, we just concentrate on four originality, fluency, flexibility, and elaboration. Okay? So, beyond maybe part two, uh, creative teaching part two, we do the rest. <laughs> okay, so, what do you mean by fluency? Fluency means, have uh, you seen some of your students who are very fluent? Fluency here means coming up with many ideas. 
many ideas. You ask them one question, like, okay, how to uh, make use of this bottle, uh, you know, empty bottles like this, there are so many, right? How to make use of this empty bottle uh, to recycle? Wow. And yeah, they ask them, but they can come up with many ideas. Ah, they are very fluent. Okay, so how do you use that test to test your fluency? If you, right, for the parallel test, right, just now, if you attempted the more parallel sets of parallel lines, then you're more fluent. Uh, okay, how do you manage to finish all 16 sets? <laughs> how many? <laughs> okay, so you count yourself, okay, you count yourself. How many parallel lines you finish? If you finish, like, say, 10, then your fluency score is 10. Okay, if you finish at like 5, then your fluency score is 25. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so that is a way, that's the way they measure fluency. Uh, you can test your own students. Uh, not only paradigms, you can use circle, you know, many other, uh, you might can get more pain. <laughs> okay, so you want to test your students' fluency, uh, you ask them things like this. Uh, uh, so the more they answer, the more fluent they are. And you find that there are some students, they do a lot compared to some students. They only have been two, one. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So that is a, uh, uh, another one example of influence. So who got the highest score of fluency? Who got more than 10? Did it bring in as well? Oh, did it not? It's the most creative. <laughs> most fluent, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's try. So fluency means what? The, uh, the ability to come up with as many ideas as possible. Not necessarily different, okay? Not necessarily different. You know why? Sometimes I ask students to do, you know what they do? They draw al al alphabets, you know? A, B, C, and then they finish up the 16 in one minute. Okay? Of course they get 16 from fluency. But there's another component of creativity which we call flexibility. Aha! Uh -huh. Flexibility means different ideas. How many different ideas you come up with? And that's a bit difficult to score because you have to understand how do you measure different? How do you know it's different? You know what I'm saying? Ah, okay. So, if, uh, the next component of uh, creativity is flexibility, right? Let's look at flexibility. Okay, flexibility, can you see that? Is the uh, usage of uh, uh, what you call it, coming up with different ideas, different categories. So for your case, the parallel line activity, if you want to measure or assess, assess uh, flexibility, yeah? okay everybody, uh, just to give you an idea, how, how do you know a person is very flexible? Okay, answer is, he will come up with many different answers. Not like a guy uh, who Made alphabet all A, 1 to 16, not alphabet. His flexibility is only one. Because he can come up with only one category. What is the category? Alphabet. But if a person uh, can finish the 16 uh, with 16 different categories, huh? ah, that guy is more flexible. Correct, right? Ah, okay. So, how do you know different categories? This is one sample. Okay, everybody see? The first one is called uh, accessories. So, if you draw uh, any kind of accessory, you know, accessory you wear, right? Uh, using the paradigm, uh, this category one. Uh, maybe vehicle, if you draw a lorry, okay, uh, this category two. Uh, three animals, four games, five human, blah, 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 and so on. Can you see it the other side? Okay, now, your first category, your first uh, uh, drawing falls under which category? The first drawing. The first drawing in this category. Okay, so you put one. Uh, one and that's a okay, so you know it's a category. And if it's furniture, if you drew a furniture, it's 12. You put 12 certainly. Beside the diagram. Beside the diagram. If you drew an uh, alphabet, 15. Put 15 and circle it. If you drew building, if you made a building out of it, then it's a uh, Seven and certainly. You give a cat number to your uh, that drawing, you give a number of the category of your drawing. Then you'll see how many different categories you got. 
that is your flexibility. Okay? Is it clear? Is that? So circle your category number and then you count how many different category numbers you got. Different numbers here, different category numbers. How many different numbers? Some of you may have uh, five, so your flexibility is fine. Although your fluency may be 16, but you only have five different categories. You know what I'm saying? Ah, so a creative person, when you ask them questions like, how many different ways you can use this bottle? They can come up with, you know, if they come up with five answers, and five of them all different, you know. Ah, that means the fluency is fine, the flexibility is also fine. And they are more creative compared to someone. Uh, oh, I can put this on this. And then I can put this on top of this one. I can prevent this particle from slipping. But the function is all the same. So the category is only one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so if the flexibility yeah, is a, it's a measure of a person's creativity. So when you teach your students to be creative teaching, uh, uh, you should try to bring this in your, incorporate this in your class. Ask them, how many ways you can do this? How else can I do that? Ask them, open-ended question. So they start thinking. So the creative class is where the students think. And they're motivated to think. Unconsciously. If you force them to think, they won't think, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you force them to think, they won't think one. But you make them interesting, make it interesting, and they automatically, naturally, they will start thinking. You know what I'm saying? That's the characteristic of a creative teacher. Make it so natural, everyday thinking, you know, and they, they always do it. They can do it. But if you make it force them to do, they will never, <laughs> you know. Okay, anyway, you get the idea, right? So, fluency means how many ideas. Uh, flexibility means how many different ideas. You get the idea, right? Okay, now uh, I'm sure you've got a score already. How many of you got? Flexibility more than 10. 10 different categories. No. More than 5. Ah, you see, we have a lot of creative features here already. <laughs> creative lecturers. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So, flexibility finish. Let's move on to uh, elaboration. Because elaboration is uh, easier. Easier to, uh, than originality is the toughest. Okay. How do you score for elaboration? Okay, uh, there's no board, I'm quite bored here. But anyway, I can just explain, uh, let's say, <coughs> Oh yeah, okay, good, great, great. Let's say, uh, I might use a parallel line. Why do the board can do this here? Creative. You don't need a board up there. You want to have this in you have and then you end up with it. You could be used. I don't know. Okay. With this. Just uh, do the Okay. Let's say I draw a parallel line, something like this. Okay. This is what you have, right? 
So, you, the uh, student may draw a tree, huh? like this, and then right here, tree, okay? Uh, for elaboration, zero, because he has just drawn the minimum to represent a tree. You know what I'm saying? But if he drew, ah, this is an extra idea. Don't need to have it, but he gave extra. Ah, one point, elaboration. If he drew branches, ah, you know what I mean? Actually, don't need to, because I already know it's a tree. I don't need to, but he gave extra. Ah, another point. So you got two points for elaboration. And then he gave this one, shape. You know what I mean? Ah, actually, you don't need to, right? Mm -hmm. I already know it's a tree. But he gave extra. Another point, three. Uh, you all do and see, for each of your picture, how many extra points you gave? <laughs> That is a total elaboration. Maybe another parallel line, you draw house. And then you say house. Okay? No more. But if you drew a shape, uh, uh, you can add another one mark here. Maybe you had fence, fencing, another mark here. Maybe you drew something like that. Okay? With a tiles, roof tiles. Another one. Now, this is how you add up. This is how you score for students who are very elaborate. And the Japanese are very elaborate. Ah, research has found that uh, the idea originality comes from the US most of the time. They're not good at coming up with creative ideas, original ideas. But once they get the idea from the US, they add on to the idea. They make it better, smaller, cheaper, lighter, whatever that the customer wants. And they conquer the market. You know what I mean? So the US, you know, money cannot make money. You know what I mean? But they only can come up with creative idea, but they cannot compete with the Japanese. You know what I'm saying? All the technology, HDTV, now what? HDDT or whatever TV. You know, now with the handphone all like that, like that, oh, technology, you know, you can snap pictures, right? Ah, all these creative ideas actually came up from there. Okay, now you see how many creative ideas elaboration score. So in this case, my elaboration score, three here, four, five, six. Uh, this one is one, no? You just add all the ones that you, this one, one point, one point. So my total, huh, total elaboration for me, huh? okay? My total elaboration for my two pictures here is six. Uh, what is your total elaboration? Come and see. How many is your total? How many of you your elaboration can go to more than hundred? How many of you elaboration hundred? You know, because if, if whenever we, the highly elaborated person, uh, highly highly elaborated person. Uh, after drawing the parallel tree, uh, he cannot move on to the next one because it's so elaborate. He keeps on adding idea and idea and idea. That is the elaborate person. Have you seen some students like that? They cannot move on. So the fluency is so very little. Fluency very little. But elaboration a lot. That's another type of creativity. Be very elaborate. Okay, in real life, in real life, uh, a person is elaborate. Uh, can spot errors in your thinking. Uh, now, you know what I mean? Uh, you, tell them, you tell them an idea of how to organize a party. Yeah? They can immediately tell you, hey, you forgot this, you forgot that one. Uh, this is the elaborative person. They are very good at details, you know. Ah, in real life. You notice your students also like that. Teacher, sir, you know, you didn't think about this one. You know? How come like that? Uh, you cannot do like that because like that, like that. Have you seen some students like that? Yes. Even your children sometimes are like that. Very elaborative. Okay? And they are very good. And, they, and this is uh, very important. Uh, they can pinpoint and tell you where the problem is. Okay? That means elaboration is a good characteristic among students uh, being elaborative. 
as you can see, the Japanese steal the idea of originality as they become richer. Be more elaborate. Okay, how can you make this one a better drinking water? <laughs> how can you, let's say you are the manufacturer of this bottle, right? and you've got so many competition, right? so many brands, right? Then you ask the, the R&D people in your company, how to make this one a better selling than others, compete with the others. Oh, the elaborating person can give you a lot of ideas, huh? can conquer the market, you know? can get you know, sales higher, uh, better sales for this one. So it must be very good in business, people with creative, so elaborating can be very good. Um, many other examples, you know, okay, you can think of. So in class, afterwards when you're doing creative teaching, huh? you have to find out how you can make your students become more elaborating. Uh, Especially when you ask them to draw an right essay in English. How many of you English lecturers here? English. Okay, if you're English lecturers, you ask them to write essay. Yeah? The scene at the market. My goodness, they can fill up 10 pages just describing the market. Have you seen? Whereas others not elaborate, but half a paragraph or so cannot finish. A market is a place where you go and buy stuff, finish, full stop. You know? Whereas the, the elaborating person, my goodness, they can describe what is exactly happening, the smell, the sound, blah, blah, blah. You answer what I'm saying. Ah, that's language elaboration. Okay, anyway, back to my story. Uh, let me switch back to this one. Okay. So, I've already finished flex fluency. I've already finished flexibility. I've already finished elaboration. You already scored your own. Now, move on to the most difficult part to score. Originality. Ah, okay. How do you score for originality? Before you go to originality, uh, originality means, uh, this is a summary, easy to remember. Originality means the ability to, ability to generate unique answers, ideas. Unique means uh, uh, not very common. Uh, unique means not very common. Maybe only 1% of the population gives the answer. You know what I mean? Just unique. If 10% of the population give the answer, is it unique? Not unique, but very common. 10% are really very common. So, Torrance, who did this question, who came up with this idea, Torrance, E. Paul e. Torrance, he said, if your answer is only given by 1% uh, of the population, you get 3 points for originality. Uh, between 1 and 3%, if. Uh, Okay, so he said that if your response is given by less than 1% of the population, then you get, for originality, you get 3 points. Ah, between 1 and 3% of the population, uh, meaning uh, not so original, uh, you know, correct, uh, 1 to 3%, not so original compared to 1%, right? Ah, you get 2 points, he said. That means he has to do a population study, isn't it? Huh? Then to see what is how many, who is 1%, who is 1 to 3%, and then uh, 3 to 5%, 1 point. Can you see the idea? That means it's less original than that. And then more than 5%, sorry, no mark. <laughs> okay? Because more than 5% means not original anymore. Okay? Uh, that's, the, that's the strategy. So this one is called uh, statistical infrequency method. Statistical infrequency method. Infrequency, uh, not frequent. The more infrequent your answer is, the more original mark you get. You know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, that's the method. So, uh, that's the strategy used to give marks. Okay, so he came up with this one. He came up with this scoring uh, table. Ah, uh, uh, this one. He came up with this scoring table to find out who is more original from his uh, responses he got from the population, about 20,000, 30,000. 
he found that those who drew, you see the parallel line, those who drew abstract design, okay, without any meaning, who make a book uh, out of the parallel line, boxes, door, how many of you draw, draw, do draw a door? <laughs> no mark, zero, because very common, more than five percent. <laughs> Geometric shape like square, rectangle, uh, that kind of thing. House, how many of you drew a house? Very common. No mark? No mark for originality. Human face, how many of you draw a face? The eyes, blah, blah, blah. No mark. Leather, leather, no mark. Because very common, more than 5%. This one. Uh, letter, self uh, picture, frame, uh, a present. How many of you drew a present? A package. Package, gift, rocket, stick person, you know stick person? Stick person, you draw a stick person. Trees, how many people do trees? No, oh, ah, sorry. More than 5% of the people do that. Window, shirt, how many people do a shirt? No, ah. Okay, so this is how you calculate the originality. What do you think? You agree or not? Correct or not? Huh? If you are very common, huh? then this is not so original. So, and then, the one mark is for who? 3 to how many percent? 3 to 5 percent. Huh, that in his study he found that those who gave between 3 to 5 percent are this one. Who drew a board? Blackboard. Whatever board. And who drew a boat, bottle, clock, fence, flag, flower? Flower? How many did you drew a flower? Huh, you get one more for originality. <laughs> okay? So you write that O R I R E equals to 1 for that attribute. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, can, whatever can, uh, uh, sardine can, uh, candle, anybody drew candle? Very common. Ha ha, you get one mark. Uh, check out for class, drinking class. I think most of you drew drinking class, very easy to see. But only that's so straight drinking class. Goal post, huh? very common. Football students, children like football. Uh -huh. Sure, draw goal post. Hey, Jaime, rope. Anybody drew a road? Ah, a road. You get one mark. Okay? Our glass, you know our glass, right? Uh, cotton pens, paper, piece of uh, paper, like A4 paper. Pencil? Ah, one mark. Okay? This is according to US, huh? We not do the Taiwan yet. <laughs> this is US standard, huh? Okay? Must I try the uh, Malaysian one? Because we haven't done that. Very expensive because you have to do 10,000, you know? Mm. So many. Uh, swing, table, blah, blah, blah. Okay? And then let's move on to. Ah, you want to know who got two marks for originality? Who got two marks? Okay, this one. Who drew a building, apartment? Ah, according to this, you get two marks. <laughs> so you put Ori, O R I equals to two, right? Of course, you add up all them. Okay, all the bodies. Arrow, anybody drew arrow? Arrow is very common, you know, but you get two marks, you know. Uh, automobile, car. Car, I think, very common. Anybody drew a car? Ori? There's not a vehicle. Okay. You had that. Uh, blackboard, ah, blackboard, bowl, uh, bowl, time, bowl time, bowl time. Uh, chimney, city, skyline, cup, cup. We had glass just now, but this one is cup with the handle. Uh, desk, fireplace, bullet, and so on. Garbage can, you see garbage can, get two points. Cake, blender, candy, car, cup, ice cream cone, jail. Ah, jail. Anybody do jail? <laughs> Okay, lollipop, pocket book, robot, uh, any kind of sign, traffic signs, uh -huh, you get two marks, spaceship, telephone pole, that is very common. Okay, everybody give yourself. How many of you got two marks? Two, originality, you got. Good, add in, add in your points, score yourself. You put, or for each picture, you write OR equals to how many. Then you have to add up all the OR. Ori, Ori means originality. Okay, that is for what class? Two marks. For how many percent this one? Uh, three, uh, no, one to three percent. This one, uh, only one to three percent, right? Now, those who gave less than one percent of the population gave these answers. 
See, very original. Three points. Ah, okay, three points. Abacus, you know what's abacus? Uh? You know the Chinese one, the Dake, something? You know? Ah, the abacus. Ah, you drew abacus, the three point. Aeroplane. Balloon? Anybody drew balloon? I think very simple, but you drew a balloon. It's straight line. It's a string. <laughs> ah, you get three point. You see, the guy who drew a balloon is, is supposed to be original. Birdhouse. Birdhouse. Ah, no child. Teachers must draw bush shelves. <laughs> Pray to young church. Court column, building columns. You know columns about the building. Crown, diving board. Ah, dog. Anybody drew a dog? You see very well. Dollar bill. If you drew something like a our bat, our I did it. Marks. And eggs. Ah, if you drew eggs, I don't know how you draw it with the pair of ones. Envelope. Anyone envelope? Very common. Get three points. Ah, okay. Tie glasses, firecrackers, fish, flower pot, food pot, food, blah, 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 room, cabinet, camera, castle, hammer, horse, house, ah, tree house. Uh, knife, kite, it's quite common, kite. Uh, mountain, what else are common? The most probably would have got ruler, tombstone. Right? You want to draw a tombstone? Anyway, you will get three marks for that. Washing machine. Okay, anybody got three marks? Anybody? Ah, for which one? Fish. Say again? Fish. Fish, okay. Ah. Anybody has three marks? Yes, four. Ruler. Oh, it's kind of common, right? Rich. Mushroom. Okay. If your answer is not here at all, not even here, you still get three marks. Anybody got any answer not here at all? Not here at all. Good. Three marks. Scenery. Salary. Salary is a... Is a for vegetable, okay. Aha, uh -huh. salary is not here. Yeah, you get three points. Wow, <laughs> very original. Okay, so you get the idea, right? So the statistical infrequency method uh, is used to. Uh, so when you teach your students, you ask them for ideas. Huh? How can we do this? How we can do that? If their answer is so unique, huh? that means they are very highly original. Because nobody else will think of, you know, and you must uh, reward them or praise them so that they, the others will know that it's okay to give weird, uh, you know, original ideas that nobody else will think of. But if you criticize them, uh, the others will not think of it anymore. You know what I mean? So the idea is to get them to uh, motivate them to come up with original ideas, not come in the textbook. Okay? So the idea is not come in the textbook. So get them to come up with ideas because get them to say think that textbook is not the, the complete uh, thing that is because information is complete like everything changing. Okay? So get them to think of new ways uh, of thinking of problems and solving problems. Okay. Another thing, when we asked the students, when we gave this activity, uh, okay, parallel activity, uh, they are so very creative, more creative than what Lawrence thought. What they did was, what they did was, what they did was, they, you see, they were given parallel lines, right, like this. They were given parallel lines, right, like this. Okay. So, what some students did was, Although they have to give one name for each, right? One name for each. You know what they did? They just do like that. That's it. And anybody who combine all the pictures, the you know, telephone lines, combine all these, they get immediately three points. And they wrote their telephone lines. Uh, of course, you must. You know what I mean? You must write. If you don't label it, nobody knows what it is. 
Uh, so see things like that, they combine. Uh, and so, and, and some of them combined all the 60 in one picture. You know what they did? They did, they, <laughs> this is very unique, you know. Let's say they have parallel lines like that, right? Okay, parallel lines. They combine and make into a beehive, you know? Beehive, and then they do the bee inside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, they did like this, sorry. They joined, uh, they did such a way that it's hexagon, you know? Mm -hmm. Very creative, the whole picture. Huh. It, the, the instruction was give a name for each picture, mm -hmm. but they went beyond that. Mm -hmm. You notice that? Mm -hmm. The instruction was give a name for each picture, but they went beyond that. You see, some crazy people, they don't follow instruction. <laughs> You know? Ah, so you must appreciate your students who are like that, you know? You give them assignment, huh? they go beyond the assignment. Mm -hmm. So you must appreciate that in class. And show to the class. Everybody see, this is what we mean by being more creative. Mm -hmm. uh, okay? And then others will follow. So they use the social learning theory, you know? So Pandora's, Pandora's social learning theory. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, that's one of the theory we use in the classroom as a creative teacher. Okay, we, re we recognize, we praise uh, creative students and creative work. The others will think, "Wow, oh, good!" The teacher appreciates people who are creative, come up with new ideas. They also will come up with better ideas next time. Okay, but if the teacher says, "No, cannot think of other ideas. Use the textbook idea," everybody will. No, the teacher doesn't like new ideas, but then you it. Okay? So a creative teacher is one who is open-minded. Even though it's not the textbook, she accepts the answer. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So this is what we mean by creative teaching. Yeah? When we talk about originality. So what did we learn so far today on creativity? Actually, there are more than that. But I want to just focus on four. Right? Okay? The first thing is, try to get your students to become more fluent. More fluent means, huh? They ask them questions like, how else? What if? Ask them questions like that. Pertaining, pertaining to your topic, the topic that you want to teach. Let's say tomorrow you want to teach your topic, right? Okay? You don't give the answer. You don't give the answer straight away, you know? How else can we export rubber? Right now we are exporting rubber. You know, I'm just looking at my own story. <laughs> you know, example. Okay? Uh, in Thailand, what is your main export? Thailand? Rice. Thailand? Rice? Okay. How else can we grow rice? Uh, how many times do you harvest rice per year? Two times? Three times? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe two times. Okay. How else can we harvest rice three times a year? Uh, you know? Get the answer, you know, I don't know, if it's relevant to your topic the subject and you're going to teach. So you must try to tweak it into your, your classroom. You're not teaching something new. You're the same thing, you're teaching content, right? But you're tweaking it a little bit to make them think. So your class is a thinking class. Not giving school feeding class. You know school feeding class? Eat. I give you the uh, eat swap. <laughs> you know? Eat. <laughs> not school feeding class. It must be a thinking class. Uh, do you think your class is a thinking class? Then you don't give students the answer straight away. Make them think. Like yesterday's class, yesterday, uh, the Catechetan's class, I never give them the answer. How many divisions are there in psychology? As in research. Take out the handphone. <laughs> this time I gave them the website, the next time I don't give them the website. They're supposed to know where to go and look for information. Do you know what I mean? Ah, like that. So you tweak. We are teaching the same thing, the content we are teaching, but we are teaching it in a different way. The thinking way, not the spoon feeding way. You see what I'm trying to say? Ah, this is what we mean uh, in class. That's, very, that's how you train students to think. When they graduate, they are all thinking people, they know. They know where to find answers. Not everybody can remember everything. We cannot be a human beings, we always forget. But we must know where to think, where to get the answer. The idea is to teach them where to get the answer. How to get the answer. And how fast can you get the answer. And make you more effective. That's what we want to train the students. 
okay? Because we all need times we forget. You know what I'm saying? So given that situation that we forget, we must now try to counter it by uh, using technology to get the information as quickly as possible, the best information, the most accurate, to become the better person. Huh? Become a better problem solver. Okay, that's all part of creative teaching already. Okay, I'm telling you, moving on. Okay, so we got what we are supposed to, what's the time now? Okay, a few more things, and I'm back to my screen. One more time. Okay. Okay. Now, so we have already done uh, the major areas of creativity, but uh, to, uh, to make sure that I emphasize this, there's not only four, there are more than that, okay? So your homework will be today, uh, you become very inquisitive, right? Ah, one more uh, characteristic of creative teaching is making the student become more inquisitive. Ah, at the end of your class, uh, they must become very inquisitive. Ah, yeah, why, uh, I must go and find out. Automatically, you know. So you must develop what we call in psychology, uh, what we call in psychology, uh, in your class, I forgot to tell the very terms class yesterday. Not enough time. Uh, where am I now? One more time. Okay. Cognitive dissonance. Have you heard this word? Cognitive dissonance. This is a, some sorry psychological term. Huh? Cognitive dissonance. Okay. Cognitive dissonance means what? Uh, uh, your class is good if you can make the students be, uh, what do you call it, uh, still they are thinking. And then they cannot rest until they find the answer. Your, their thinking is already like disrupted. Huh? Why, yeah, why, yeah, why, yeah? Uh, you must, uh, what do you call that, become, make them more inquisitive. They must try to find out why. And after your class, uh, they will go to the library or handphone or whatever, uh, chat with their friends to find out the answer. That is what a creative teacher is all about. Leave uh, some good movies do that. Uh. You know some good movies? Uh. You know that you don't know the, uh, who's the murderer until the end. Uh. <laughs> Keep you guessing. Uh. Ha, like that? Uh. Ah, a teacher is like a movie maker, you know, director, you know. A teacher is like a director. You must teach yourself to it, of course, mean practice. Uh. Not, not everybody can do that, right? Don't tell the answer until the very end. Or don't tell at all. Let them go find <laughs> the answer. But you stir the what? Interest. So they automatically want to find out why, why, how, why? Ah, they leave the class like that. Very good. You are a successful teacher. You know? You leave the class where the students become very interested. Why, why, how, how to do this? Huh? You know, they become very interested, even though in the beginning they were not interested. Uh, science you can do that, uh, maths also you can do that, provided the way you present. Mm. Okay? Uh, that's what some, I do it. Uh, and one more thing, creative teachers do that spontaneously. Never plan, you know. Ah, very, very, really very creative teacher. Never plan. They're very spontaneous. They see the students, they see the students in the class, huh? oh, they get all the ideas. The content is there, they can still teach the content. It's not that they're doing something else, you know what I mean? They're still teaching the topic, but this time, they go one step higher, they don't get the answer, they leave the students very interested. Go and find out the class. You don't have to ask them to find out, so, but they will naturally go and find, because of what? You created this cognitive dissonance. Human being, if they are confused, they will naturally go and find out answer one, you know. Natural tendency. You know, to ask them to go and find out answer. Uh, this is the theory behind learning. Theory behind learning. Okay? Developing how? Developing an inquisitive mind. But it comes in practice. So that's why doing this kind of workshop. We train our students, teacher trainers, and we have what call future teachers, uh, to change their style of teaching. Don't give the answer all the time. And be spontaneous. You don't have to have 
Oh, first minute I must teach this one. Second minute I must teach this. Third minute I must teach this. You just have a very rough outline, you know, for the whole class. Like for this workshop, I got a very rough outline. But I go with the crowd. I still cover the outline, but I can go with the crowd. You know what I mean? Sometimes it gets spontaneous ideas, it gets carried away. Something happened outside the classroom. Ah, it is relevant. Ah, I'm the same. And why did it happen? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So something like that. So those are characteristics of creative teaching. Spontaneity. Yeah, spontaneity. Okay, anyway. So you get the idea. And uh, hopefully you can pass it on to your colleagues and friends and so on. Okay, let's move on. Any questions so far? Anybody wants to ask anything? It's free for all because not many of us here. So it's like a family eh? picnic. You have one family picnic today. <laughs> okay, free for all. Okay, just put up your hands up if you have any questions. Eh? Okay, just ask. And then tell me your experience also. Share your experience. Eh? Okay? Uh, that's good. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so, what is the things that we have learned so far? Uh, components of creativity is, of course, originality, uh, flexibility, fluency, originality, and elaboration. And I said this now, there's more to be done. Okay? So, if you are very inquisitive, what do you do? <laughs> Maybe after the workshop or you do it last break, find out what are the other aspects of creativity. It's a handful. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there are many more. Okay? Ah, then I'm giving some of uh, more type, uh, more examples here. Abstractions, uh, abstract, uh, abstractions of titles. Okay, give you an example. Okay, uh, just now when you gave your title, huh? okay, just now when you gave a title, let's check and see. Huh? Hey, who has a high level of abstractness of uh, title? Okay. Very abstract one. 
You can keep that title like this. <laughs> Pencil. <laughs> or tree, or chair, or building. But give an answer that is uh, very deep. Huh? No deep. Hmm. Some deep meaning. Anybody give an example? Anybody? Give me one deep example. Growing. Huh? Growing. Growing. Yeah. Four tree. You do what? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. What did you draw? What did you draw? Oh, you drew it. Aha. Okay. Green. Yes. The green. 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 Because everybody must go green now. Okay? Instead of concrete candle. Anybody check and see your answer? Maybe you're secretly very attractive. <laughs> your first level of me. <laughs> anybody went beyond? How many of you have anybody complex thinker? Deep thinker. Ah. So you can also test your student. You can check how your student. Some of them are very deep thinker, you know. Then you'll be wondering, oh yeah, uh, this student is not seeing what other students think. They go beyond. Okay. Can you think of that? Can you think one more? For parallel. Okay, now look at your title, change it. <laughs> change it to a more deep thinking title. Make it more abstract. Try, try. Look at your title. Anyone? Try to think of a more abstract, make it more abstract. See whether you can exercise abstractness. Think deeper. <laughs> yeah, you have to think, right? Okay, so this one way you can ask the students, huh? Okay, you see abstract abstract. Okay. So let me go back. Let me go back. So remember this is also another uh, example of creative people who think beyond what they see. Everybody see the same thing, but then this person go beyond that. How? Huh. Example of creative. Somebody wants to come. Okay. Uh, so let's move on. Another one.